your connection in Southern Oregon and Northern California. This is News 10 at 6. Good evening, I'm Trish Gloves. I'm Rick Tillery. Thanks for joining us. State leaders are proposing new restrictions on pesticides for home gardens after thousands of bee deaths over the summer. He says Jessica DeNova spoke with local bee experts about what the proposed changes would mean for residents here in the Valley in tonight's Top Story at 6. The state legislature is buzzing about a proposed bill restricting home gardeners' use of some neonicotinoids, the class of pesticides suspected of killing bees last summer in Portland and other cities. So they're used to protect plants from biting and sucking insects. Sarah Laird, the executive director of the Bee Girl organization, says evidence on the effects of these pesticides on bees is still inconclusive, but says there have been lethal and sublethal effects when neonicotinoids are combined with other chemicals or used in high quantities. If bees are sprayed directly with neonicotinoids or if the, if the pesticide is sprayed directly on a flower and just too much of it is used, if it's overused, it can definitely have a direct lethal effect on bees like we saw in, in the Portland area. News 10's gardening expert, the rogue gardener, Stan Mapolsky, says a lot of the responsibility of using less pesticides falls in the hands of home gardeners. It's been proven a, a fact that the, the biggest uh, users who abuse chemicals, unfortunately, are homeowners. If passed, Representative Jeff Reardon's proposed bill would require home gardeners to hire a professional to apply these pesticides or use alternatives such as organic compounds, an idea Mapolsky favors but says is still not perfect. They're much less harmful to the environment. They're still harmful. Don't think because it says it's organic. I mean, if it kills, it's not a good thing. Both Mapolsky and Laird agree with bees pollinating one third of the food we eat, it would only benefit us to keep them safe. One out of every three bites that we eat, one out of every three sips that we drink, comes back to a honeybee or comes back to a bumblebee and their pollination services. Covering your news in Jackson County, Jessica Denova, News 10. Laird says if passed, she hopes restrictions on neonicotinoids don't result in higher use of other chemicals also harmful to bees.